Hi, Internet. Hey, guys. How so, you doing? We thought we would uh, do another one of these. Um, and uh, Dan, it's, not, can... it's not that we haven't changed clothes for a day. It's the same or, day. Or a weekend, because I guess this is probably going to go up. I do kind of wear this Is this going to go up on Monday? or? Let's put this up tomorrow. Well, let's put it up today. Let's just do it today. We're wow. going to give you two today. Two in one day. And we won't do anything tomorrow. Okay. On Saturday. We'll do that. You get a day of rest from watching us. All right. So anyway, question. Harder right question. A little, little bit harder than some of the ones we've dealt with before. Question. So when Jesus says, go and sin no more to the woman who was caught in adultery, what does that really mean? I mean, is it really possible to go and not sin anymore? Yeah, here's what this kind of comes down to. Um, and is, is are, you, can you, are you supposed to sin at all after becoming a Christian? And, and really, if you go and search the interwebs, um, you're going to find two extremes in this camp. The one that you'll see come up most often if you were to go and research, like, should we live in sinless perfection after coming to a relationship with Christ, they're going to camp out on, well, the Bible said, go and sin no more to that woman, and so he wouldn't tell us to do something that we can't do, so you should live sinless after your conversion. There's other, and there's other scriptures they would point to that say, well, it says those who continue to sin or those who keep on sinning um, have no part in the kingdom of God. And so they would say, if you sin one time after you accepted Christ, you are actually lost, and you are depraved, and you are unrighteous, and so therefore you have no part in the kingdom of God. The other camp... There's another camp then that says that it's all about grace. So after you accept this grace, you just do whatever it is you want to do. Right. Like you can just go... Murder, live a life have adultery, sin. doesn't matter. Right. But, you, you know, you've accepted Christ, you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and That's so you're right. fine forever. Woo-hoo! Praise hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to say, and this is my take on it, and we're going to base it in Scripture, and I think this is, you agree with this, is that correct? Yeah, even though it's your stance, I also <laughs> agree with it. I say there's there's two camps. I mean, those two camps are, are two extremes, and there's a middle um, that, that we actually live in. Um, so the first question is, should we be striving for sinless perfection? Yeah. Why not? I mean... Every day, we want to make it our goal to live greater and more boldly for Christ and live in less sin than we did the day before. So yes, we want to make that the endeavor. Are we going to always succeed? Absolutely not. Does that mean that we are now lost again? No. And I'm going to base that on some stuff. First off, the Bible tells us that if we claim to have no sin, we are a liar and the truth is not in us. So there is, there is not a way where we can go, I don't have any sin. I don't sin anymore. Because as soon as you say it, you're a you sinner. just sin. You're lying. Oh. So uh, even, look at, even look at some of the heroes of our faith. You look at guys like Paul. And Paul said, in present tense, of all of you guys around me, um, I'm the worst sinner. And yet he's Paul. I mean, Peter gets called out for sinning. Yeah, called out by Paul. Who, I mean, he's like he's being hypocritical. And Paul goes, that's, that's wrong, bro. So are we saying, this is post-Pentecost. Are we saying the guy who preached the day of Pentecost where thousands are saved is now suddenly lost again? That's ridiculous. So here, here's the deal. First off, to the woman caught in adultery, this is my opinion, but I think he's actually dealing with the context of this woman's th- life. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he's saying, go commit the sin of adultery no more. Right, she was a prostitute. She was having trouble with lust. And he was saying, look, you don't have to live that life anymore. I'm giving you a chance at a different life. Go and do that no longer because now you have something new to fulfill you and to give you value. Right. And what did we expect Jesus to say at that point in time? Did we expect Jesus to say, go, just have yourself a good time, keep doing what you're doing. It's, of course it's, not. It's totally fine. Yeah, I think the other thing <laughs> is that we that maybe we miss and what Paul is getting at. It's, it's, we, we get from New Testament scripture, those who continue to keep on sinning, those who... Those who, who um, Gosh, I'm going blank on the scripture right now. Um, it says, "It says those who sin, those who continue, continue yeah. to sin, those who live in sin." It's it's giving you this implication of not those who sin, but the way it's kind of worded makes me feel like it's yeah. those who are running headlong into sin with an unrepentant heart. Yeah. You're habitually you sinning. You, you don't see anything wrong with it. You just decide, you know what? I know God doesn't like us, but I don't really care because this is what I like and this is what I'm going to keep doing. So, right. It's your, yeah. it's your problem, God. So, yeah, we should endeavor to live in this Christ-like life with as close to, to being sanctified and justified and perfected as possible. We're not going to succeed most of the time. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't endeavor to. Um, and so what we look at, and, and there's not any life short of Christ that you can look at in Scripture where that sinlessness is even modeled. 
And so, yeah, we should we should look at trying to do better and better each day, but we also have to um, have to come to grips with that reality that confession and repentance is a continuing ethic of the believer, that we're going to sin, and what God is saying is, you must confess your sins. It says, those who continue to live in sin, blah, 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 blah. It also says, confess your sins one to another, and God was faithful and just to forgive our sins. So we continue to live in His grace and His forgiveness because of our continuing ethic of confession and honesty to our God. Right. I think it's one of the most beautiful things about grace is that it doesn't matter you know, how many times we mess up, and we're going to continue to mess up. We're going to continue to fall short. But at no point God's like, you know, I've given you tons of chances. I'm just done with you now. Right. It, God's grace is just, that, that's why they write songs like Amazing Grace. Right. Because it's kind of amazing. Really it's is. awesome. And, uh, and so you always get to come back to it, and it's a beautiful thing. So You guys are fantastic. It's really, it's been awesome doing this. we got a lot more to go, and we're going to get deeper and deeper, but uh, we're having fun with this. This is uh, part, what, six of a 7,842-part yeah. <laughs> series, so Listen, got a ways to go. Listen, we want to see you guys at church this weekend. It's going to be a great weekend. You come to church. Come to church. We've had some conversations even this morning with some people. God is doing some stuff in their life. and Even if you're watching this in, like, Duluth <laughs> yeah. or... Come to Anderson Hills. Saturday night is If you don't off. come to you can go to your own church. Saturday right. night, like if this is like the chain, the Saturday night's off of it. It's amazing. Yeah. And Sunday morning, if this is a hook, off the hook. Wow. You don't want to. That's off amazing. The off the chain, off the hook, for sheezy. You are so street. I am so street. Uh, we love you guys. See you guys later.